All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Cutabout Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Pure Electric Engines mod, which is being made by forum user Jatwa. And what this glorious little piece of work looks at into the game is a lovely little selection of engines which are powered purely by electrical charge rather than any other form of fuel, which is very intriguing. So let's jump into the space plane hangar and have a look at the currently six different parts we do get. Now let's grab a Mark I inline cockpit for size comparison's sake, and then head to our janitor's closet mod filter, just leaving on JDSA. And being an engines mod, we'll go to the engines category. And here are our glorious new engines. Now we're gonna start here first with the EC1 Pure, which if we pop right on there is of course as you can see a small engine being made for the 0.625 size category and is a very beautifully made engine and that's something you can say across the board for all of these they are very well modeled very well textured very very good on all the detail like i love just the sort of cage surrounding the interior engine on these it's very very cool looking now as for the stats on it this particular engine will provide 25 kilonewtons of thrust with an isp of 10,500 500 using of course electric charge like all of these engines and also does have a built-in battery of 100 electric charge to use so all in all a very very good little engine and the reason i wanted to look at this one first is because it's kind of the odd man out compared to the rest as it only has one singular flight mode. The rest have two. So if we knock that one off and put on the next, the EC2 Cyclone, we have on this two different flight modes being either normal or if we toggle a performance flight mode. And for the normal flight mode, you're gonna get 101 kilonewtons of thrust with an engine ISP of 9,000. But if you want that little extra boost into performance mode, you can have a 211 kilonewtons of thrust at an ISP of 4,000. And yeah, you're gonna be using a heck of a lot more power per second, but you're gonna be getting a lot more thrust in the process. Now beyond that, this engine does also have the extra benefit of some gimbling at 10 degrees, and then an internal battery of 4,000. And again, it looks good and even has a moving part, which I have to admit, the spinning, I can't stare at it for too long. It makes me a little nauseous, but it's still cool nonetheless. Just just don't stare directly at it for too long. Or maybe you can. That's just me, possibly. But yes, let's knock that one off and then head to the next engine, the EC3 Manlanetto, if that's how you say that right. Now this one, rather than being a normal and performance, we have atmospheric and then extra atmospheric which is space it's it's for space but for some reason it's called extra atmospheric all right i'll roll with it and this one in the atmospheric mode will produce a pretty good amount of thrust at 443 kilonewtons with 3200 on the isp but in atmosphere extra atmospheric mode it will do 170 kilonewtons of thrust with an isp of 305 again 10 degrees of gimbling and 4,000 electric charge. We also do, of course, have another spinning part, but this one, little bit different. Little bit different. Yeah, still spins though, still spins, very nice. And then the next engine we're gonna have a look at is actually going back to the front, and we have the air ionizer. Now this is a radially attached engine, as you can see here, and if we zoom in, it is a pretty interesting looking little block. Very good for creating some VTOL engines for your craft. And this one, oh boy, again, we have the switch between either atmospheric or extra atmospheric slash space. And um, in atmosphere, 
Oh man, it produces 600 kilonewtons of thrust for this little engine, which honestly I think is a little bit cheaty, but at 10,500 ISP and just the high electric charge usage, perhaps that balances it out for you. But for me, I still think just this tiny bit of an engine creating that much thrust as a bit off, especially when you consider the extra atmospheric space mode only produces 60 kilonewtons of thrust at 305 ISP. So a little bit a little bit strange, but you know what? A fun engine nonetheless for your electric VTOLs. Now the next we have the EC4 electric. And I like this because, well, it's a Star Trek engine. And it does attach, of course, by the node. Now, you can actually sort of play around with it in some other locations, but it's meant to go on the node, and then you put another piece beyond it. And, yes, that's how you do attach this. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a Star Trek nacelle. And I'm all right with that. Now, just like some of the other engines here, we have the atmospheric mode or the space slash extra atmospheric. And for this one in atmosphere, it will do 886 kilonewtons of thrust at 3200 ISP and has 10 degrees of gimbling. It is a lifting surface at 0.3 and has a 10,000 electric charge. Now, once you get into space with this thing, with, I mean, with 880, 86 kilonewtons of thrust that's not going to take you that long in space you'll have a whopping 400 kilonewtons of thrust at 305 isp but that's not all because we have a much larger version which is designed for 2.5 meter size uh fuselages and there we go again it just fits right in line there and it's a big one it's the ec5 electric heavy this one producing in atmosphere 1330 kilonewtons of thrust at an isp of 3200 and in space 620 kilonewtons at 305 again the 10 degrees of gimbling range and the 10,000 electric charge and it's just beautiful you can make yourself a little kerbal enterprise with these things and that that is just a wonderful, wonderful thing. But yes, that is all six of the engines currently in the Pure Electric Engines mod. So let's actually take a look at these in use in a plane I built earlier that um, isn't the best of planes, but it does work surprisingly well. Well, the VTOL part doesn't. I tried to, I tried to use the the uh, the air ionizer engines for VTOL. Oh. <laughs> I didn't put them in the right spot. I could have adjusted it, but it's funny. So we're gonna take off and I clicked the wrong thing. <sighs> of course I did, of course I did. There we go, load it here then. Excellent, we still have Jebediah Kerman in the uh, pilot seat. And once it loads, there we are. Now, uh, if we actually just throttle down really far and activate the air ionizers first and actually I'm gonna throttle this down to like 50 because I, I really probably should have should have put like a second one over here in the back because of all this weight this engine just kind of flops the thing over but I think at 50 we might be able to at least not die immediately so activate and throttle up Nope, nope, still bad, still bad, still bad, still bad. But if you properly balance things and take the time to make the VTOL work, you can see how you could use those for VTOL engines. I mean, technically, we have taken off just in an uncontrollable spin. And you know what? Let's make it worse by throttling all the way up at that 600 kilonewtons of thrust. <laughs> Oh, it amuses me so much. Look how high we've already gotten. It's 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 horrifying. So freaking horrifying. And Jebediah is loving it. I mean, of course he does. Well, let's actually... Let's revert the flight to launch and take off via the normal plane engines. As they are actually nicely balanced and working just fine. So if we move those around, throttle all the way up, and then launch... I actually don't even have to touch anything since I did use these smaller wheels in the back. The angle of the plane 
just kind of takes off itself. There it goes. I haven't touched a key. There we are. A beautiful plane. And it... Oh, it goes quick. These uh, electric engines and all the thrust they produce... Oh boy, you can get into space in record time with these things. They are pretty darn impressive. So in fact, I am going to throttle us down quite a ways and try and bleed off some speed by pulling up there. And yeah, so we don't get all of the crazy wind effects and can actually see the engines a bit more clearly. It's just a glorious little set of engines. Depending on how much power you're wanting to use, you got the full gamut of range of engines to provide what you're looking for. And if you're wanting to go very sci-fi, you've got the, uh, the Electrek here. And for VTOL, if you do it competently, unlike me, you got the Air Ionizers. It's just a lovely, lovely little set of engines all powered by electric charge, which just makes it that much more interesting in my eyes. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for this mod. It's a great little pack. And if you'd like to check it out for yourself, which I would definitely recommend you do, you can have a look at the link in the description as per usual. But that is going to be it for today, my friends. I hope you all have enjoyed and that you do come back for the next episode when hopefully we'll be looking at yet another wonderful mod. But until that time, thank you for watching, and as always, have a good one!